Writing a research paper for a Q1 journal doesn't have to take months. It even doesn't have to take weeks or days. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 proven steps that allowed me to write my research paper from start to finish in just four hours, 22 minutes without using any fancy AI tools. And with another 60 minutes for proofreading, my research paper was ready for submission in five hours and 22 minutes. That's less than one working day. Here's how I did it. The first key step is no distractions. You need to find yourself in an environment when you can't be distracted. I think a big issue is that people try to focus, but that's the completely wrong approach. It's very difficult to fight off distractions and focus. That's why focus becomes this elusive thing and we're constantly bombarded by emails, social media messages, meetings, phone calls, what have you, and writing papers becomes a struggle. Instead, focus becomes the default mode when there are no distractions. So you've got to engineer the environment around you so that you can't really be distracted. So what I did to write my paper in four hours and 22 minutes, I went down to the co-working space in our building that I know nobody else uses it. I locked the door for an hour so nobody could walk in and disturb me. I switched off all notifications, no phone, nothing. I just took the bottle of water that I needed, my laptops, my headphones, and that's it. I was unavailable, lost to the world for an hour, two, three, four hours in order to finish this paper. And that's what you have to do as well. Because if you're trying to fight off distractions, you will fail. I'm telling you that with full confidence because I've learned it the hard way myself. Now, the second thing is very much connected to the first step, and that's no phone. Just leave the damn thing at home lock it away somewhere. Research shows that even just the presence of a phone on your desk, somewhere where you can see it, significantly reduces your ability to concentrate and express yourself. And interestingly, researchers, when they further studied that effect, it even turns out that it doesn't have to be your phone. A mere presence in the room visibly of a phone, even if that was a researcher's phone, significantly reduced the participant's ability to complete complex mental tasks. So please trust me on that. Don't take your phone, leave it somewhere else, let important people know that you're just not available. And I promise you, the world will not collapse in those few hours that you're gonna be spending writing papers, but your ability to focus will skyrocket. Now, the third really important thing is binaural beats. These have been shown by different studies to really increase your ability to focus. And you can look them up either on YouTube or Spotify if you just type in binaural beats. Research shows that probably the ones between 40 and 60 hertz are the best ones for deep focus and really deep work. Just beware of any binaural beats that lay over some natural sounds such as the sound of forest, water, or things like that. It should be pure binaural beats, 40 to 60 hertz, and try them. Trust me, they'll really improve your ability to focus. And one pro tip as well is research shows that it's beneficial to start listening to them about 15 to 20 minutes before actually that deep work session. So rather than put the binaural beats on right when you start writing, start listening to them earlier so that your brain gets into that focus mode. The fourth thing that really helped me write my paper in four hours and 22 minutes are noise cancelling headphones. What I find is that when I put them on, I get this tunnel vision combined with binaural beats and being in a space where nothing can distract me, I feel like I'm in this tunnel where focus becomes almost effortless and I can really get into the zone and time starts flying and I'm able to produce so much more work. So if you haven't tried that yet, I really encourage you to get noise cancelling headphones and use them with binaural beats. One reason for this might be it's just that even environmental sounds like, you know, a car passing by somewhere or a train passing by, somebody walking around and speaking, you know, the noise of a ringing telephone, all these can distract you from flow. And research shows that it takes about 20 minutes to get back on average into flow or full focus 
after you've been distracted. So that's why I think such noise cancelling headphones can really help you to stay in that zone focus mode for as long as possible. The fifth really important thing is to block your calendar. Now think about it. If you're a professor, you probably block your calendar for important meetings with your PhD students, with other faculty members. You block your calendar for important events. If there's an online conference, you put all that in your calendar. But let's be honest, how many of you this past 12 months have actually blocked time on their calendar, on the work calendar for writing? Probably not that many of you. And what this leads to is that then if it's not in your calendar, it's very easy just to say, well, I've got this other priority that I need to be working on right now. So I'm not going to be working on my papers. But you would never do that and change your priority if you had to teach a class or supervise your students or you had a meeting with the dean, it would be in your calendar and you would be doing it. So I think the act of putting it in your calendar also prevents other people from being able to book meetings with you and distract you with whatever else they want you to do. So definitely block your calendar. Now, another thing that can really help you is just to lock your door or put on a don't disturb me notice. And I actually did that in my co-working space. Of course, if somebody, you know, started banging on the door and loudly trying to get in, I would have opened the door, right? But I think that can really, really help you to focus as well. So just lock the office door and put on a note on the door that you're busy writing your papers because otherwise people can just come in whenever they want especially if you leave the door open and you will get distracted are you ready to implement these strategies to publish research papers in high impact journals in your discipline are you a professor a researcher or a phd student who would really like to advance their career make a really big contribution to the field by publishing more papers in better journals while actually working less and enjoying the whole process then i've got really good news for you i've just opened some slots in my calendar and you can book a free one-to-one -one consultation with me where we'll dive deeper and identify the specific challenge and bottleneck that is blocking you from achieving your full potential and then we'll also clarify your goals and then at the end i'll outline an action plan for you that will help you to achieve all your academic goals publish more papers and advance your career if this sounds like something that you want to do book the free one-to-one -one consultation right now the link is in the description of this video now the next Thing that allowed me to write my paper in four hours and 22 minutes is to have a very clear priority. So I think too many of us set very vague goals, as in, I want to finish my paper. What you need is a very specific, tangible goal that you can actually achieve. So for each writing session, you can decide how long it's going to be, an hour, two hours. I personally prefer longer ones, like of at least two hours, or even longer, if I can, I'll block off my whole day and just focus on writing. You have to have a very clear goal. So for example, session number one could be to write the whole introduction, or it could be to structure the introduction, or it could be to highlight the research gap and present the aim of your introduction if it's a very short half an hour session. So have a very clear goal and priority in mind because that's the only way you will be able to measure your progress and that's the only way as well your mind and your brain can focus on something that you can actually achieve. Tip number eight is to tie any loose ends before you start your deep work session with the writing. The thing is that research has shown that knowledge workers tend to get distracted a dozen times every single hour. Just think about that. A dozen times every single hour. And the interesting thing is that most of these distractions were self-inflicted. In other words, we distract ourselves. It's not just that other people distract us, we are prone to distract ourselves. For example, we're writing a paper and then we suddenly remember that we forgot to schedule that visit to the dentist. So then we open our calendar and do that. And then we try to come back to writing. And then again, you have this nagging thought that you forgot to email your PhD student about rescheduling tomorrow's supervision session. So then 
you do that. So that's why it's really important to finish off any pending tasks and those that you cannot finish, you want to make a to-do list and put that to-do list on your calendar so that it's off your mind and in a safe space where you know that if you get distracted by something, well, it's already in your calendar. And this really eases the cognitive load and allows you to focus much better. Now, you will notice that out of the 10 tips that I want to give you, so far eight have had seemingly nothing to do with writing. I haven't said anything about expressing your research ideas better, structuring your papers and so on, which I think is really, really important. But you have to understand that 80% of your results will come from these first tips. Even just creating that environment with no distractions, that will be a huge, huge winner for you and a huge boost to your research paper output. Because after working with hundreds of researchers, professors, I found that it's, you know, in many cases, it's not like you cannot write papers. You can, and you might have published papers before in Q1 journals. However, you're not as efficient as you would like to be. And as a result, your research paper output suffers. That's why these first eight tips are so important because they create a workspace for focus. Without that, no matter what writing skills I, you, or other researchers might have, you won't be able to write a paper in four hours and 22 minutes like I did. But now, of course, when it comes to writing, I mean, even if you have the best space for focus, but you don't know how to write papers or how to do that more efficiently, you will still be struggling. That's why tip number nine is to develop a clear blueprint for writing papers. This is like a map that shows you where you're going so that you don't have to stare at the blank piece of paper thinking about what it is that you need to write next. And after working with hundreds of researchers, I can tell you with full confidence that 99% don't have such a blueprint. They have experience writing papers and intuitively they kind of know what they need to do, but the process is a bit random and every single paper is treated as if it was a new paper. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There is a proven process that you have probably used if you have already published papers or other researchers and professors have used before you to publish in Q1 journals. And you wanna develop such a proven blueprint step by step and make it as specific as possible in terms of the exact elements for each single section of the paper, how long each element should be, the typical language that researchers in your discipline use so that when you're writing your next paper, you're not starting from scratch. So block time in your calendar to develop such a blueprint. This will be the best time investment that you can make this year because it will significantly reduce the time it takes you to write papers and you can use it for the rest of your career. Now, the 10th really important thing that allowed me to finish my papers so quickly is that good enough is just good enough. I speak to a lot of researchers every single week, reaching out for support with increasing their research paper output. And many suffer from perfectionism, even if they don't call it perfectionism. But this problem where you're just constantly tweaking and retweaking your sentences, your paragraphs, and you spend hours, and at the end of it, you're not even that happy with what you've written. And nothing is ever good enough to move to the next stage. But you have to remember that perfection is a delusion. Nothing starts off perfect and nothing is ever truly perfect. Even the best papers, the most influential ones, published in the best journals such as Nature, they started off as very mediocre drafts. And the only way the researchers were able to make these papers so good was to understand that good enough was good enough to move on to the next section of the paper and the next task and then proofreading and then submitting. Because at the end of the day, no matter how amazing you make your paper, guess what's going to happen when you submit it? Well, the reviewers will still find fault with it because that's their job. 
So forget about perfection, make it good enough and then move on to the next task. So this is the whole process that allowed me to write my papers in just four hours and 22 minutes. But if you want to publish regularly, you can't really rely on these last minute sprints because they can be exhausting. What you need is a system that allows you to regularly put out papers for top journals in your field. And this next video shows you exactly how to develop such a system so that every single year you can publish three or more papers in Q1 journals without burnout, without working 60 hours a week. So watch this video next.